Hi, welcome to my next uh, free tutorial Friday. Uh, this week I'm going to do something a little bit different. And I'm going to show you a drawing. Uh, it's on a piece of newsprint. It's on a roll actually. And this is a drawing I did while I was uh, first starting my teaching career. In uh, Switzerland Internet I needed a, a demo. Uh, basically I wanted to have a, a bunch of drawings to throw, show my students. And so I did this drawing and um, the reason I did it on a roll of newsprint was that it would force me to pre-think uh, the drawings before I would actually draw them. And the reason for that is that there's no, uh, you can't see through this paper. Since you can't see through the paper, I can't do an overlay. And I chose to draw on a roll. Uh, maybe I'll show you the roll here at the end of the video. And um, so it was one continuous drawing. And so I didn't have the opportunity to throw out any of the sketches. And so in a way, and then I chose to sketch in pen, like uh, these drawings are done with a, uh, like a Pilot high-tech C, the fine lines, and then uh, something like a Copic uh, multi-liner to come around and hit the heavy lines. And so by using a really sort of unforgiving medium, like a, a pen that as soon as you touch it to the paper, it's completely, you know, black, you really have to think ahead. And so that was actually the exercise, and that's what this, this actually forced me to start thinking ahead uh, when I do my drawings. And so for that reason, it was quite, it was quite effective um, to think about where's your vanishing point, the horizon line, lay down a couple of very light guidelines, and then start to sketch in, and then how to save a sketch when it's going poorly, because inevitably, some of the sketches go awful, and so you just have to figure out how to save them. So <clears throat> this was that exercise. And the thing I really want to talk about um, and look at in this drawing is line weight. So let's pull up this sketch here. So when I look at this sketch, you'll notice that there's quite a bit of variety to the line weight. And you know it's very, very thick here in the foreground. It gets lighter and lighter. And then the far side wing is almost untouched. And the reason for that is that um, we have what's called uh, atmospheric perspective when we look at the natural world. And when there's a lot of atmosphere between us and an object, it diminishes the contrast um, between the foreground and the background. So uh, things that are far away are lower in contrast. So not as bright and not as dark. Over here, they're much more the opposite. Brighter brights, darker darks. Well, I don't have any value to use. I'm just using a line drawing. So what I'm doing is I'm applying that idea of atmospheric or aerial perspective, is what it's also called, to try to make the near side wing that's in the foreground look closer um, than the wing that's in the background. And so you can do this across an entire object, even though the object is not huge, you can apply this idea of atmosphere that as something gets further away, the line weight gets lighter. One, because the lines are actually getting smaller if it was a real object in perspective, but also um, just to sort of make this part of the object pop out. Now, there's some ideas on outlining. Um, when you come back and you have, say you have a line drawing done, and now you want to start to add your line weight. There's um, some people that like to come in and then outline the silhouette of an object like this. And so where there are holes created by overlapping elements, those blend together and this entire object starts to take on one silhouette. And so that's one way to do it. And I tend not to do that. Um, so if we look back in just a moment at my own line work on this, oops, it would go here and go up. So my strategy when I do line work is just like classic figure drawing. And the reason I don't like to do this, just outlining the silhouette, is that um, it tends to flatten the perspective. So you spend all this time getting these overlaps and making sure you're drawing through and you get all the vanishing points set up right. And then you come over it and do your line work, right, and basically turn it into one flat shape. So the classic figure drawing idea is that wherever shapes overlap, the shape that's in front gets the dominant line. So that would be, for instance, this wing Sorry, my shirt was catching there. I'm trying out a new setup. So that would be heavier, right? 
and even this little the little element would be heavier on both sides right but not so heavy as the bottom of the wing so I tend to do larger elements right like this wing has a dominant shape so I want that to have a very strong silhouette and I also tend to shade the underside of shapes a little bit more than the uh, lines across the top so if this wing was to go in front of that little strut then it would overlap um, this is the dominant line here and needs to be stronger than both of these lines behind it and then this line is probably heavier than this line because it's sort of at the back so you apply that sort of idea of atmospheric perspective all the way across the shape but also within smaller elements so that means this is heavier this is a little bit lighter right so heavier lighter and then this one has to be heavier even still than both of those okay and then if I have a little like detail or a flap or something on that little wing then that's even lighter so you're trying to vary that and when you're working with a pen it's a little bit difficult right because you basically have two line weights when you're working with pencil it's quite a bit easier to get a big variety to your line weight so let's look at what I did to that sketch so there you can see and I went over with the uh, the fine liner a couple times right the felt tip to give me a little bit of variety and you can see I, I weight the bottom edge of this a little bit like you might be seeing a little thickness to the wing and then it fades and then it picks up again when I want to emphasize a corner and so you can lead the eye around the object and you can start to get elements to overlap so this little cone here overlaps that line right here um, here not so much at the top and then this opening of the mouth overlaps at the top and then only here but then it fades quickly and then this little nose element overlaps so sometimes and you'll see this element sort of becomes the window in small areas you might not want to emphasize that overlap as much and you might want to make this into one shape so in this case I did that first technique where I just outlined this part right over there and didn't extend that line very far over and then here up and over but the wing I definitely want to put the wing over that body I wanted to put these mechanical elements on top of this one then I wanted this wing more importantly to be over that little tail section so that's kind of the general philosophy I take I tend to do I tend to focus on overlapping um, and I'll show you some more examples so that was a pen sketch that's just a little bit of marker there for the shadow and so um, I like to start a lot of my projects by writing and so most of my projects start this way which is to define the configurations um, think about things to draw there's searchlights there's a spotting scope there's cargo pods fuselage hoop to lift it up so there's the hoisting loop um, it's, it's lifted by some sort of support crane so you see this is kind of just continuous line no line weight variation and it tends to look very much like a mechanical uh, drawing or an elevation like a, an architect's drawing. And then we start to add some line weight, it becomes much more lively. You see there's another example. And see I was emphasizing those overlaps, right? The far side wing, very light. And then this very strong and heavy and almost outlined as one shape on top of this other shape. And then the, the silhouette of the, the fuselage all the way around, very light at the front, right? Heavier here along the bottom and at the back because it's closer to us. So let me just cruise through this, show you some more examples. This, this drawing is about um, this drawing is about 60 feet long, I think. Um, and done, I don't know, maybe a couple of days. I think there's some dates and there's some, so there's a lot of overlap. So even with small sketches, you go back a tick. So even with a small sketch, you can have quite strong line weight. Um, and, it's, and if it's done with a fine level of skill and craft, it won't overpower the sketch. Um, it just makes it pop out that much more. Here's another example. So this is again that fine liner, this uh, fine liner type of Copic felt tip, and then the uh, the high tech for the super fine lines. Probably a, at the time it was probably a 0.3. And you see this, even though it's a small mechanical bit, and this is a much bigger piece. Look at how it overlaps, and that sets it up right. This to be its own element. There's another one. 
And you can do it with anything. You can do it with, with landscape elements. You can do it with mechanical bits. You could do it with this guy's head inside the cockpit on the other side of the far side of the window if we wanted. We could do it with interior graphic elements. So whatever you want the viewer's eye to follow and to look at the most, just emphasize the line weight. So there, that was the end of the first day, actually. Uh, 96, this drawing was done. Oh my goodness. I'm not even gonna say, but 17 years ago, I did this drawing. Um, I guess that means I've been doing this for a little while. So, more line weight. And I like to put the objects in scenes, so low horizon, right, set up my vanishing points. Here he is flying along. He's got like skis and wings. It's, it's very much a quirky little vehicle but um, I like to do those kinds of vehicles, especially because this is fun for a class assignment. It's really for a, uh, a drawing class, so why not have fun with it? Little headquarters. All right, here's another example of some line weight, still using pen. Um, but in this case, there's this crevasse, right, this big crack in the ground. He's out tooling along through the snow and ice, and then right, you want this to overlap, make it heavier than any of the vertical lines, right, and then this one could also be heavy, but probably a little bit less. I'd probably do this side heaviest, this side next a little bit. So interior corners tend to have a little bit less line weight as opposed to exterior corners. All right, so that would be an exterior edge and then an interior edge off in the distance. And you see how these lines are lighter than these lines. Here's another, another drawing. And like I said, this was really great practice for myself to try and figure out how do I Right, pre-think a drawing, lay in as few guidelines as possible. Right, you can see there's actually a center line, there's a line for the far side ski, there's a line here. You see little tick marks everywhere. And the little tick marks are me just sort of estimating the perspective grid and estimating the foreshortening. And then I tend to draw to those little tick marks. And by the time I'm done, a lot of it just disappears and you end up with a nice illustration. So there's an overlap of the tread over that cutout and then this edge overlaps the tread. Right, and the whole thing overlaps and a little bit of cross hatching. There's not really a lot of value work in this. It's really primarily line, line drawing, sort of one after the next. There's a lot of overlapping there, a lot of very heavy lines. And it doesn't matter if it's the shadow edge or the top edge. Right, so in this case, it's the shadow edge here. Let's see, I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit this one on, but uh, not all of it anyway. Like I ripped that, sad day. Um, so, Little elements like this little mechanical bit right here, this little strut, I tend not to put double lines that were this heavy, right? Even though it's overlapping this part of the wing and tail and the fuselage. So I try to scale the line weight based on the size of the element and the overlapping. So you see this mechanical bit is bigger and stronger. So that gets a little bit heavier line weight and it overlaps itself a little bit, right? Sort of here and here. But then this overlaps all of that and the wing. But if I make it with this sort of line weight, right, on both sides, it'll become the dominant feature because those lines are just as thick as the actual object. So I tend to only put the really heavy line weight on the big volumes and the big shapes. And then the smaller pieces, they get a little emphasis, but not so much that if I did double line like this, it would really dominate the sketch. So I try to balance that. And if something's fading off, right, if it's either fading off into the distance or into the background, then take that line and try to taper it. And that's the nice thing about the felt, felt tip pin and something that's even a little bit dry. You can get a little bit of variety to your line weight. There's an interior shot, big hanger, some guy in a crane. Here add a little bit of value. So it's really just a simple silhouette, the guy tooling along through the snow fields. Uh, patrol. So here I switch to, oh, still pen actually. That was a brown pilot razor point. And then switching to some mountains. Here using a little bit of marker. Marker's not the best on newsprint. Um, I'm not gonna talk much about value in this little tutorial. So more line weight, switch to a Tuscan red uh, Prismacolor. There's another. All right, so now we're getting into some of the details. And you can see again, the line weight strategy here is the big cutout at the back of the fuselage. So that's the heavier line that overlaps this element. And then these little guys, we can see the little wall thickness through there. So that gets a little bit heavier. And then these guys get emphasized because they're overlapping this cutout.
cone shape inside that engine. And so I really wanted to see this serrated, right, stepping of those teeth around. So I really went back out and just hit each one of those with a little bit heavier line weight. And here the line weight's acting actually like the wall thickness of the material itself. Right, and you can even see, I hope you can see on the video, some very light section lines through here. Right, so I like to mix it up and have a nice variety so that the bold lines draw you in from a distance. Like say this is up on the wall and I want to get somebody to walk over to the sketch. I want to have some nice bold lines that make the big shapes easy to understand. So I want this wing to pop in front of that fuselage. But then when you get close to it, I want to have some other lighter elements, little fasteners, little parting lines, graphics, some, some wing flaps, uh, little vents and things. So I'll try to mix it up a bit, have some nice variety. Here I'm, I'm just trying to focus on the cockpit area. And so I don't want to emphasize the rest of the fuselage and it's just loosely sketched in. So I really just want to pull with my line weight. I'm actually using the line weight here and applying line weight not as it relates to this overlapping the fuselage, but really the fact that I just wanted to pull out this one detail. So I'm kind of silhouetting the entire detail and then going in and adding more interior information. There's another wing. You know, when, this, when the drawings get up to be this scale, this is about, I think it's about nine inches top to bottom. So when they get to be this scale, you can really go in and push that line weight. And then the idea also is to try and get some acceleration to your lines by adding a little bit of thick to thin. So here it's a little bit thicker at the nose, and I really see this as a, right, a strong point of emphasis and a focal point for this line drawing. So I really want to emphasize my line weight and then snap it away right, and away, and let it fade, and then hit it here again. I see this as another transition point, right? So I really want to emphasize those transition areas. So go heavy there, there's kind of a resting spot for your eye, and then accelerate quicker up and over the canopy, and then getting a little bit darker into that area. Same here on the wing, so a little bit of a snap here, right at that point, nice and dark, and then lighter, fading away, and then lighter, and then pick up again at this point here. And I want to sort of connect your eye from here to here with these heavy line weights. There's another one. See a big overlap here of that nose section over that intake. Switched it up here to uh, indigo blue. Started adding some bit of sky and clouds, but the marker really is not that friendly with the um, newsprint. So it sort of just sucks your markers dry. So I tended not to use that much. I think we're getting there. Um, it's about, I think it's about three days. There's another date. I, don't, I didn't check the date at the beginning, but um, I think the arrow, each arrow is one day. So if you see them, see them go by, yeah, down there in the frame. Um, again, more overlaps. This, right, really wanted to emphasize the overall silhouette. So I didn't really overlap this one so much on top of the cone, but I did the chin area here overlap. So you see the far side ski very light. The fuselage, which sits in between the skis, a little heavier, and then the near side ski, very heavy, with a nice thick to thin to emphasize that um, and make your eye move across this, those surfaces and those shapes. So a little bit of environment, a little three-point perspective, a little another patrol vehicle down below through this bridge. You can see down to another ice field. Looks like a chicken. Right, it's called chickadee because it's very chicken-like more overlapping, right? Nice variety, got some, some graphics, some very light line weight. My interior corners are quite light, but the exteriors and the overlapping is quite dark. And you'll see far side ski lighter than near side ski. And a lot of times with symmetrical objects, you know, everybody understands that that's the symmetrical version of this. You don't really have to go in and spend much time drawing out a perfectly symmetrical version because people get it. I think. Let's zoom ahead here. There's another one. This thing has wings, obviously. It, it flies, it skis, it's got treads on it, so it's kind of a flying snowmobile, I guess. There's a lot of heavy line weight there. This was a this was a really fun drawing to do. And I thought I was gonna be done and then I so I stopped there. And then I decided, oh I'm gonna continue and, and do one more one more day. So I did some details. So some nose bits and pieces. 
All right, so the last the last few drawings on this this roll. This was a really fun drawing for me to do. Um, this whole roll it was quite a it's quite a great uh, quite a good learning experience. One, I needed examples for my students, but more importantly, I really wanted to test myself and force myself to think before I would draw. And I think more than at any time in my drawing career, this is when I learned um, and developed a nice sense of draftsmanship. Because it's like everything, all the drawings in here are freehand. Um, but what I learned was to draw very lightly at the beginning. Because while I was investigating shapes, right, I didn't want to, if I go too dark, then I would have committed to them. And if I didn't like them, I was stuck, right? And it was on a roll, so I couldn't very well, you know, start over. And so having that pressure, and then I couldn't do an overlay, right? So I couldn't do a sketch. It's probably not the smartest design uh, medium to use. Right? Not being able to do an overlay, not being able to see through the paper, not being able to start and stop on individual sheets. That's a much smarter design process. But this was about learning to draw. And so in learning to develop, to develop my, my draftsmanship and to think ahead and try to pre-visualize shapes before I would draw them and then learn how to save a drawing when it's going poorly and also to think about um, how can I draw efficiently, right? So some call outs and some notes and taking off the wings now and taking off the tread and taking off the skis. So there's all sorts of things that you can draw, sort of never ending. Here's a, here's a nose piece inspired by a walnut. Odd shapes, but there's an example of the same sort of line work applied to something organic or more organic and see all the overlaps. And wherever they're fading into a surface here where I can see the entire surface, that's where my line must fade by the time I get here. So heavy, heavy, and then when it goes to the inside, fade. Heavy here, and then fade. And heavy here, and fade. So, and then heavier here, but then fading. So I want those to be more subtle, a lighter line. So you can really control the viewer's eye, and you can control how they interpret the forms by changing your line weight. So that's the end of this roll. And um, I do have another one I'll share some someday, maybe. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that. Have a great week.